Lately in the chess world, there's been one person accusing other chess players of cheating. His name is Vladimir Kramnik. One of the players he accused of cheating is Jose Martinez Alcantara, who said that this is unfair. I'm not cheating. So I'm going to demonstrate I'm not cheating. So let's play over the board. And they, they agreed to play over the board. And that's what we're going to analyze in this video. I'm briefly going to analyze the games played in the first day of this tournament. So game one, we have with white pieces Kramnik, with the black piece, we have Martinez Alcantara, d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, g3, d5, bishop g2, the Catalan opening, bishop d6, knight of 3, castles, castles, and knight c6. Normally c6 is a little bit more common, but knight c6 was played. Knight bd2, a5, occupying space on the queen side. Bishop b2, developing pieces, knight e5, bishop d7, e4, a3. So what I was saying with this arrow that you saw is that occupying the center further and limiting white scope. So what this bishop has only one square to go. Bishop c1 is a little bit too passive. So bishop c3 holding the center as well. Bishop takes e5 was played. D takes e5, d4. Now, that's a very good practical choice from black because black is saying um, your your bishop is kind of trapped. Uh, you have to do something quick quick about this. And there uh, there's only one way for white to get a comfortable position and that's bishop takes d4. Because after knight takes d4, you play knight f3. You don't take this, because black would still be more active in this. So knight f3 is the, the, the way to go. Because knight takes f3, queen takes f3. This knight has nowhere to go now. You're going to get back your piece, and you're going to be more active. But what happened in the game is e takes f6, d takes e3, and now your pieces are going to be a little bit uncoordinated. So knight f3 happened, g takes f6, e5, trying to open up this diagonal for the bishop. But anyway... Black played very well because black closed that diagonal. And not only not only this bishop is a little bit passive, but that knight is also passive. Rook ad1, trying to, to, to activate the pieces, but it's not very good because the rook, the rooks are not well, this rook on e1 is not looking so well, given that it's looking towards a blocked file. You don't want your rooks in blocked files, you want them in open files. And black center in general is so strong. Now, as everything else, if you're in a wing position, you have to concentrate. A lot and black already with 96 and allowing this knight to get to d5 is not doing that so knight c7 is a threat knight f6 is a threat you have to start playing passively rook b1 you have to play passively you get checked rook b7 it's a little bit scary and you allow g4 now g4 is doing something called undermining the center david what is undermining the center undermining the center is breaking the structure so this f5 pawn is supporting e4 if you, if you distract this pawn like this, then you're going to take e4 and your pieces are suddenly going to become active. So g4 undermining the structure, very good move by Kramnik, increasing the chances of a draw. So bishop takes f3, uh, rook takes f8, we transform to this rook endgame. h3, very good practical choice to trade pawns. That's what you should do when you're losing. Rook ae8, trying to activate the rook. And now we get to this position where Kramnik played rook b3, which is a mistake. The only drawing move was king takes h3. Because after rook e2, king g3, rook takes e2, rook b6, you're going to take on c6, and, and this endgame is a draw. But what happens is that rook b3, rook e2, it looks similar, but after rook takes f2, king takes h3, rook c2, this pawn is, is a little bit of a problem, so you have to eliminate it. Rook takes a2, and this is no longer drawing. Kanamnik play rook d3, threatening rook d6, check. And the only reason why this is winning is because of one move. If black doesn't find this move, like what happened in the game, king f5 was what happened in the game, allowing rook d6, um, that, then the game is going to be a draw. So what black has to find, rook f2. This is the only winning move. After rook d6 check, the reason why this is such a strong move is that rook f6 exists, and now this is no longer a draw, this is winning for black. Your defend c6 in such a better way. But what happens is that after king f5, rook d6, you have to defend c6 in a very passive way, rook a6. And after this, players did a little bit more shuffling, but... They both knew that it was a draw, so after a while, they eventually agreed to a draw. Let's go to the next game. So now we have Martinez Alcantara with the white pieces. We're going to shuffle pieces, so I'm not going to repeat that over and over. They play this uh, opening, the French, bishop b5, knight c6, bishop d3. Looks like a little weird, but as long as everyone's occupying the center and developing their pieces, everything is kind of fine. They take on d5, knight c4, bishop g4, reacting to these moves. Many of these moves are just reactive moves, which means that you attack my queen, I move my queen. Bishop c7 d6 sacrificing the pawn you were going to lose the pawn anyway so you might as well get the bishop pair for it uh you keep the bishop pair because that's an advantage and martinez alcantara played this very well because now the bishop pair is pretty strong and what happens is that after these a couple of shuffling it's not clear what to do with either side vladimir kramnik blunders with queen b8 because of bishop a7 very difficult move to spot but the reason is that this rook is attacked twice and it's defended twice so if you distract the queen 
you're going to take here and you're going to win a rook for a bishop. So that's a pretty good deal. Kremnik had to play g5. Or, so what happened, the reason why this is such a strong move and it's difficult to spot is that queen c8 loses to rook ac1 or queen c7. Both of them look, lose to rook ac1. And you can't play something like, you can't move the queen anywhere that it protects the, the rook. If you play queen e7, you, you, you lose as well. So it was a very good move found by, by Martinez Alcantara. And after this, there's no way black can, can, can recover. In fact, that's what happened in the game. G5 was kind of a creative try, but after this, queen f6, this is very strong. Same thing, queen takes a 7 looks, looks pretty bad and is losing. So rook takes d1 was tried by Kramnik. You do lose the queen, you lose a pawn, but trying to hold this, and in fact, this is not so easy. You still have to concentrate as, as the white pieces. But after some shuffling, I'm going to speed up a little bit. Eventually, white gets to this position, queen a3. You have two pawns. It's very difficult to defend this with the black pieces. Already here, black has to play something like king e8, which is not ideal, getting your king closer to the center. But the reason why you have to play king e8 and not king g8, which is what happened in the game, is that now you're running out, running into f5. Why is f5 so strong, David? Because it threatens the bishop and it threatens queen g3 check and picking up the rook. This is what happened. Bishop takes a 5 Bishop takes a 5 King g7, queen g3. So of course, if you take this, queen g3 is coming anyway, and that's winning. So king g7, even worse, king queen g3, and Kramnik resigned. In this game, they open up with d4, c4. Once again, they repeated this line, knight c6. And it's exciting because in this, in this position, in, instead of repeating with rook e8, they went for bishop b4. So Martinez Alcantara is playing a little bit. Martinez Alcantara is winning the match, right? So Martinez Alcantara is saying, well, I was, I'm doing well. I can repeat. I can shuffle a little bit. Uh, a3 was played. Knight takes b2. And um, they get to this position where where black is, black is doing pretty well in the queen side. The only problem is that black is playing against the bishop pair. You've probably heard that before. The bishop pair is very good in semi-open positions and open positions. There were a little bit more transformations, it looks very drawish, but Kramnik eventually got what he wanted. And what he wanted was a dry position with a slight advantage. Engines might say this is equal, but this is very difficult to prove as humans, because you're playing as the bishop pair. Your pieces of black are not so active, and even more so after this transformation, where this is a there's an equal equal material endgame, but you're slightly worse with the black pieces. Why? This rook's sorry. This rook on d8 not so active. This bishop on c o c4 pretty active, but the this the, the structure is damaged. And on top of that, do you remember I said this this bishop is active? Now you exchange that bishop, and now your rooks are more active. So you exchange the pieces that are passive, your your pieces that are passive for your act the active pieces of your opponent. After a couple of of trades, you get to this rook endgame, which is once again equal but what happened is that after some shuffling black only had to blunder once with rook a4 so far the game hasn't hasn't been so so exciting there's not been any big mistake but there's only one mistake and that's enough for kramnik to win because rook d7 now there's no good way of defending f7 you have to play rook e7 to hold the draw it's a little bit un unpleasant because you you're probably going to lose the pawn on d5 but this is still holding uh, rook a4 was tried, but rook d7, and eventually Kramnik managed to craft this little mating net. And after this, h5, h6 is a threat. Mate is coming, it's actually made in 4, forced, and black resigned. In this game, they, they repeated the French, and they played h3, this line with h3, which is very popular nowadays. It's playing in this bishop, so for instance, line f3, which is an absolutely fine move, Bishop g4 in the future might be a problem. So h3, very modern way of approaching this. Knight f6, knight f3. And now you play once again against this bishop. Because bishop f bishop f5 is no longer possible. There's a bishop there. So castles, castles, h6, sorry. Black is doing the same thing. Black is saying, well, this is a symmetrical structure. I don't want your bishop to, to, to reach g5. Sorry, that's not g5. G5. I play h6, preventing that. C4, we transform this position into an isolated pawn, which is beneficial for white in terms of activity, but in the long run, it might be a weakness. And in fact, it did prove to be more or less of a weakness. Bishop b3, bishop f1, rook a d8. Black has equalized here, so black has an equal uh, middle game. And after knight takes e3, it's going to get even better for black. So in this position, white has to play rook to c3, and it's, it's a balanced position. But Martinez Alcantara made a mistake and took with the the pawn because now 95 is there and the problem of 95 is that after queen takes d7 you play knight takes f3 check intermenso vision sook 
you damage your pawn structure as white, and then you take the queen. And this is an equal endgame, of course. Sorry. Well, you can call it an endgame already. But you have weakness on a3. Sorry. Weakness on a3. You have this weakness of the pawn structure. It's a little bit of a worse endgame. So, um, what happened is that white sacrificed the pawn trying to get activity. But it wasn't enough. And Kramnik just played very well, actually. Uh, white tried exchanging some pawns. Normally, when you're in a losing position, you want to exchange some pawns to make it a little bit more difficult for your opponent. But once again, Kramnik played very well. And at some point, Martinez Alcantara tried sacrificing the bishop, but it wasn't enough. After this, eventually black got that pawn. And after rook f4, it's, it's pretty clear that black will be able to take this point home. So we have game number five. D4, C4, Knight F3, this Catalan opening again with a different move order, B3, Bishop B2, Bishop B4. And in this case, Vladimir Kramnik took on A4 rather than playing A3, which is what had had, had been happening before. Um, there was this, this reaction in the center, a lot of activity going in the queen side. Knight D3, Kramnik eventually gets the bishoper. Once again, Kramnik getting the bishoper, proving better understanding and aiming for a long-term advantage. Occupying the center further, but after what happened is that white opened up the c-file, which is not very beneficial because now black is going to make the most of that, and black was putting quite a lot of pressure if black had played knight b8. So this would have been slightly better for black, but one slip, once again, this is why chess is so difficult. Rook c7, now white is all of a sudden back in the game, and um, after a couple of moves, you get to see this endgame, which is pretty equalish. Uh, white tried to checkmate black, of course, black is not going to blunder that, so knight on f8, there's no mate, that's what they say. And um, a couple of moves, there, there was a little bit of shuffling here, a couple of moves later, white tried making the most of the position, trading one of the knights, which does seem to benefit white, but sti still black is pretty solid, This is these players are very difficult to beat. Queen d7, you don't want to take on e5, for instance, because you're going to get checkmated. So, knight, takes, knight, knight f5, bishop takes f5, and even though it looks like white is slightly better, this is a queen endgame, and it's very difficult to, to win queen endgame, so players were, were said, that's enough, I'm going to finish this game, and let's let's agree to a draw. So, we have game 6 now, e4, e6, d4, we have this French, now it's a different French, bishop, bishop c4, 94, this 94 move, there are only 10 games in the database, and the idea is that after queen b4, hitting the, the, the king and the, the bishop, you have to move the knight to d2, the idea is to hit the queen with c3, which is what happened in the game. Rook b1, trying to get some rook b5 maybe. Castles, queen c7, getting out of all those all, all those threats. Queen g4, threatening g7. Now black has to either play g6, something ugly like that. Um, in fact, what the engine recommends is king of 8. Looks ugly, but it's equal. Uh, but black went for f5, which is a very interesting move. Queen takes g7, queen e5, to, to, to avoid losing material. Queen takes e5, knight takes e5, and... White sacrificed the pawn at the beginning, and black gave back that pawn in order to get some, some activity. So knight g3 happened, rook e1, the game continued like this, bishop d2, knight e5. There was this transformation of the position, where white has the pair of knights, and black has the pair of bishops. And that's a very interesting balance. And it proves to be more difficult to play with the pair of bishops when you're playing blitz and you're running out of time. So knights are very tricky, they jump around, so... Uh, if this was a classical game, I would, I, I'm would. i quite sure that Kramnik would be able to deal with this a little bit better. But um, what happens is that Kramnik already slipped with this rook d6 move. Rook a, so rook ta d takes a4 was better, because after rook e c1, you're not going to play bishop d7, you're going to lose the pawn. You're going to play rook a8. So that was the best way to play this, but rook d6 happened. Now you attack the bishop, you have to move the bishop, rook takes b7, you lose the pawn. And now white's rooks are very active. Rook a1, king g2, rook d1, defending d7. After knight h5, very good move. Black only has two moves to, to stay in the game. King f7, defending the, the, the bishop, or bishop all the way to a1, which is pretty crazy. What happened in the game, bishop d8 is losing, because after rook b8, this is pinned. And there's no, no really, not a really good way of doing this, so black is already losing. Black tries bishop c6, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, rook takes e 6 and you gave a rook for, for two knights, so you have two knights for a rook, which is a pretty good deal. Um, and yeah, this is already lost, it's hopeless, white's knights are very strong, and what happens is that after king f6, white would have been able to win this slowly, but white wins this immediately with knight h5. We're in game 7, we play d4, this line of the Catalan once again, different move orders, but they eventually reach the same. And in this case, Kramnik is 
not doing very well in the Catalan and doesn't go for b3 anymore. He goes for a3. Um, of course, when you're playing a match, you don't want to fall into the same traps over and over. So you want to mix it up a little bit. But in this position, actually, white is doing very well. Knight g5, g6, queen h4, h5. So black has been weakening. So Kremnik, Kremnik's idea or Kremnik's decision of mixing things up already worked out pretty well. And after h5, bishop d5, very strong move. Black should have played bishop b6 already. So there's a, this is already a, a little bit of a bailout. Because this is very ugly. Bishop takes e6, bishop takes e6, queen e4. This is hanging. Yeah, this doesn't look very nice. But it's it's holding for black. The, the engine says this is equal. But what happens is that rook f8, which is what happened in the game, this is losing now. And, it, well, okay, it's very, much worse, I should say. Not losing right away because of this f4 move. But Kramnik, for some reason, Kramnik took on f7, thinking that getting getting two pieces for for the for the or, well sacrificing two pieces for the rook was a good idea but it did it was it didn't work out like eventually you get to this position where the two bishops that you the two pieces that you gave for the rook are the bishops and they're very strong and once they get to central squares like d4 and d c4 c5 and d5 sorry you're just losing look at these two bishops rook h8 is coming white resigned so this is the last game they played, e4, they, once again they go to this French defense, very interesting, knight e4, only 10 games in the database once again, knight bd2 trying to hit the queen, and in this case Kramnik already deviated, so normally he, play he played before knight c6, but knight d7 was played, c3 hitting the queen, bishop b3, trying to get some knight c4, knight f6, castles, knight c4 happened anyway, and they got to this position, which is pretty dry because the, it's not very obvious to to know what to do. You don't you don't want to over push because you might risk too much. And um, they were shuffling around a little bit, improving position little by little, going back and forth like this. Look, rook d8 again, b3, small moves. There's not too much you can do in this kind of positions. And after bishop c6, kind of the little the first little critical moment happened. White played knight c6, which is a little bit of a mistake. You should have played queen h3. Keeping the knight on the center, this knight is pretty strong, but knight c6 happened, well, okay, you get the bishop here, this can't be that bad. It's just not the best. Um, knight g4 happened, this knight is very anno annoying, targeting f2, so you, now you have to defend that. Queen f3 happened, rook c6, you're once again trying to improve your position, it's not obvious what to do, so waiting moves, bishop c1. And then bishop g5, making, like, pose or creating this question, would you like to trade bishops and, and allow me to get a pawn on g5, which is what happened. And it proved to be very bad for black because after rook e4, you have to ask your cross the question, whose king is safer, white's or black's? And the answer to that question is, white's king is more safe, black's king is a little bit unsafe. Rook c5 is what happened in the game. And after rook takes e4, <coughs> sorry, the exchange sacrifice, hg, queen f6, there's only one way to draw this game as black. And that's not king f8, which is what happened in the game. That's king g8. Now, White doesn't, well, it looks like white is winning because of rook h1, but this is actually losing for white after queen c6. Because if you play king g1, which is the only logical move, then rook d1, and you lose. So it's not rook h1. It looks like this is winning for white. I repeat to you, this is actually a draw. But it looks like it's winning for white, and the, the reason why players rejected this, or black Kramnik rejected this, is because of bishop d5. Now, the reason, so it looks like white is winning, because if you take... Let's say, uh, what, what, what do you play? If you take e takes d5, rook h1, now there's no check on c6, so this is going to be mate. But this is still a draw, because of rook takes c3, which is pretty amazing. You play rook h1 once again, looks like you're winning, but then this is where the engine comes very handy. Rook takes g3 is, is a draw. And after fg, queen c2, there's a perpetual check. So, king f8 is what happened in the game, because Kramnik was scared of that, understandably. And after rook takes e6, this is losing, but it's not very clear to do it. And uh, Martinez Alcantara doesn't manage to, to prove prove that this was winning. And once again, Kramnik is very good at, 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 at posing trouble. So after a little bit of shuffling, Martinez Alcantara decided to, to call it a day. It was a very complicated one. I think at some point Kramnik was actually winning. But um, after a, a little bit of shuffling more, this was a crazy game. Finally, White managed to, to get to this endgame, which is, of course, a draw. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this recap of the day one of this tournament, and have a nice day.